Okay. Should be recording. Um, let's bow in the word of prayer. Father God, thank you again for this uh, opportunity to um, open up your word and um, study it to learn um, more about you. We, we ask, Lord, that um, what we learned tonight would be useful and that we could use it to um, grow in, in grace and the knowledge of you, Lord. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, okay. So last week we were talking um, about... Um, the inductive study, and we covered the first part, which is called observation. And inductive study, we mentioned that um, it in, implies three parts, observation, interpretation, and then application. So last week, we covered just um, a, a small verse in Colossians, verses, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. So, um, and we went over um, observation, and I guess I gave some uh, examples what how to do an observation, um, ask questions, um, write a highlight, use your highlighter to, to write down, I mean, to uh, highlight certain scriptures that um, resonate, making symbols for certain words. And um, we, I think we were looking at the Bible dictionary, and I was using a certain one, a Lexham dictionary. And um, so today we're gonna cover interpretation. That's the second part. So once you've done your observation and observations, you're, you're asking certain questions, who, what, when, why, how, and you're, you're in, in order to do this. Where? You have a question? statement somebody say question it in order in order to um do this type of study we want to uh, 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 use certain tools so um the tool i'm using you can use books which um up until recently most people would have to do anyway they would have to use bible study books like the um, um, Bind's Dictionary, certain types of um, um, concordance that has a Hebrew and Greek um, to do that type of study. So, but um, with since we're in 2022, modern technology has allowed a lot of that to be put on the computer. And it, it actually makes it easier once you learn how to use the software. So some of it's free, some of it you can buy. I have a, um, a version called Logos and it's spelled L-O-G-O-S. They do allow you to download a free version and you, you, you get access to use it. You may not have as much as the paid version in uh, different books and different um, um, topics that you can um, use in different um, um, software applications that allows you to do more things, but it's still very good. And in, in, in an inductive study, it's different from reading your Bible every day. We should all read our Bibles every day, and some of us have Bibles that um, it's, it's called a, a one-year Bible. So you you take it, and each day it has certain scriptures designed. Uh, to allow you to read the whole entire Bible within 365 days, which is good. I have one and um, I um, follow it, you know, on whatever, like today's the 20, I mean, the day's the seventh. So I would open up my Bible, my uh, one year Bible and read September 7th. And, and it has Old Testament scripture, New Testament scripture, a, a Psalms and the Proverbs. And you just read it through. And by the time of the, the year is over, you would have read the whole Bible in its entirety. But this type of study is not that. This is something that you would do um, uh, if you want to um, dive in a little bit deeper to find a meaning of a certain passage of scripture or um, what is a certain text pointing to. So this is more in depth and it helps you to um, gain the knowledge 
to know what the Bible says without other people telling you what the Bible says. So you'll know, <clears throat> and you don't have to say um, what the what uh, a pastor may believe or a person may believe. You'll know because you've done your own observation, you've done your own interpretation, and then you'll be able to apply it to your lives. So <clears throat> when you are doing the, the interpretation part of it, you want to use um, cross references, like Can I finding. Make a comment, right quick. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, when he when Brother Trent says your own interpretation, he does not mean you are individually interpreting a Bible that be that may be different from anyone else. He's saying that you come to the conclusion that is derived from the scriptures that and the text that you're studying. And the conclusion would be, and supposed to be, a conclusion that anyone else that does the same approach to scripture will find. Because God is not an author of confusion, and it's only, the Bible tells us there's only one interpretation. So when he says your own interpretation, that means after you do the work, you come to conclude that this is what that means. And it's supposed to concur with what Pastor Sean or Brother Tread would say uh, is true or consistent with scripture. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, because um, this, this is the purpose of an inductive study. So you, you know exactly what the word of God says, not what man says. And as um, Greg pointed out, um, there is only one true interpretation of biblical scripture. So by doing an inductive study, we would you would come to that conclusion. One important thing I want I, I like to mention before you do any type of study, you have you need to open up in prayer because um, the Holy Spirit is is um, going to illuminate what you read. Because if if we just read it, if anybody can pick up the Bible and just read it, then they're just reading it. Without, without the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you're just reading it like you're reading um, a novel or, or a book or a magazine. It, it has no meaning to you. That's why people read it and still don't understand the truth of the, of the scripture. So, but when, when you pray and ask the um, God to um, illuminate, make, make the truth known to you, he would do so. And by doing this um, inductive study, um, it, he would give you the insight. And so when we get to next week, the you know, application, you would find out what, what that scripture means and how can you, how can it be applied to your life so that you can um, um, live out what God, God's principles, um, what he has for you in your life. So going back to the interpretation part, we, when you look for interpretation, you want to look at the resources and you can use things like um, um, the cross references. Where is this particular um, word um, have been used in other scriptures? So you can get a, um, um, uh, a tie-in of, of what the author is saying. You can use um, right here where it says treasury of scripture knowledge. There's a book called Biblical Treasury of Scripture Knowledge that you can get if you don't have a computer system, or like, I, again, a Bible dictionary. So what we're going to do now, we're going to look at our um, Colossians, uh, let's see, go back to the... Uh, Trent, before you um, move too far along, just again, to put a scripture behind, again, that, that the previous... Uh, assertion that that was just made about again your interpretation of scripture it comes from second peter 1 20 where again the the interpretation is not your own interpretation like brother greg said uh, co-signed by trent i want to make sure that again yeah the, the scripture that is the foundation of, of of that assertion comes from second peter 1 20 where it says, but know this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by 
an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. So we know there that again, or at least from that scripture, that the interpretation of scripture is not what I feel or just what I think very often, you know, you'll sit in a Bible study and they'll just kind of toss it around and just get everybody's opinion and maybe try to come up with some kind of synthesis. That's not the idea here. The idea here is that the interpretation of any text comes from the Holy Spirit. Therefore, like Greg said, it should be, uh, uh, it should be cohesive with uh, anyone else. That doesn't mean the exact same words. Uh, what it does mean is that the message should be consistent. And when I read, when I learned that for the first time, it just kind of solidified it in my heart and my mind, because you'll often hear, well, how do you interpret that scripture? And people think that that's how it's done and it's not how it's done. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you. And with that said, we're going to just go over the same. And I just, I just took this portion, a small portion, so we can use um, the parts of it and to see an example. So Colossians uh, 1 verses 1 through 3 is on, is on the screen. Hopefully, you, if, if, if it's not big enough to read it, I'll, I'm, I'm going to read it. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. And I think that's verse three. I don't have, um, the version I have doesn't have the numbers. So, um, it just reads like a, a, a book. I don't have the uh, each number of verses. But I believe that's one in three. So remember last week we were going over um, certain definitions and what is an apostle, um, 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 what's the will of God, and we was asking certain questions. So now with the um, inductive study, we're going to um, do delve in and... Um, you see where it says interpretation here. It says you want to be able to examine the context of the, of the book. You want to be able to evaluate the type of literature of the passage. And you want to examine the cultural context. You want to examine the historical context. You want to identify biblical cross-references. And then you want to research in, um, important words. So imagine... Imagine that you are um, uh, an airplane or um, um, a, a flying animal, a flying fish or something, and that you are skimming across the surface of the water and that you see uh, uh, something that, you, that interests you and you want to de delve into it. You want, to, you want to find out more about it. You're going to dive in that water and you're going to zoom in. So we're, we're actually... Um, uh, skimming across the scriptures and we're going to see a word or uh, a particular item and then we're going to delve in we're going to get deep and we're going to find out the meaning of the word um why was the word used um the, uh, the cultural significance of it remember when we um when we get the uh, the teachings of the scripture we have to bear in mind the historical um the grammatical and, 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 and um, I forget the other uh, um, technical word. One of you guys help me out. Um, the um, terms that you use when you're when you're delving in and studying and when we when you're trying to interpret scripture. Um, it, 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 yeah, because some things like the the literal, the literal. Um, uh, sometimes um, the, the way the author is writing, he might be writing in a uh, uh, a way like a poetic is is it is it a was it written like a poem like the the book of psalms and the book of um isaiah they they 
the, the author was writing in such a way, it was kind of like a, um, a, a, a sonnet, a poem. They use certain phrases and terminologies versus a, a person who's talking more historically. They'll write a certain way. So you need to know, it's good to know those type of um, um, uh, perspectives. So when you're studying that particular book, it, it helps you understand how to approach it. So um, going back to um, um, the scripture here, the software allows you to, if you highlight the word, like I'm gonna highlight the word apostle, it pulls out the information of, of, of the information that you want to know. So instead of going through a book and researching it slowly and um, uh, one by one, this is kind of more agile. It, it, you can do a lot more, a lot quicker. So you can dive in. So it gives the information of um, what apostle, um, the, the apostle Paul and um, where he's from. And say, um, um, you want to look at this word faithful. It doesn't highlight it. So um, you would have to go to what um, is known as a, a Bible work study book. So there's three ways of doing it and from this software. You can hit the passage guide and it goes into studying um, 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 the, um, that, that particular scripture, Colossians 1.1. 1, 1. It, it gives information about who Paul was um, and the, the history of um, why he was writing the, uh, uh, that particular church. And, and um, it goes more in depth and it has the treasury of scripture knowledge that you can actually open up and, and read that passage. And it, you can, um, it, 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 help, it helps you um, find the cross references. So um, I can give you an example exactly of how, the, how, the, how this is done here. Let me show you. Uh, let's do a cross reference. Like if I just press the button and it, it, it gives all the different uh, places where that particular um, word or verse is used. Ephesians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Colossians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Philippians 1.1, 1, 1, and it, it goes on and on, and you can choose. Um, it lets you know um, how many times that particular word was used or that particular phrase, and the power behind that is if you're looking for a, a certain word um, like worship, you want to know how the author was using it, um, why he used it in that particular sense, it gives you a more un, a more clear understanding. So, like, I'm going to go to um, the um, let me see if the exegetical guy here. The you can this software has what they call an exegetical guide. It allows you to um, get the constructions of certain words. And like in Colossians 1.1, 1, 1, it mentions um, the spiritual attainments. And so you're, you're diving a lot deeper in, um, and it's giving you this more in-depth study on how to um, pull out the information. Now, most people in the past, I know what I would do, I would just go to a, um, a uh, concordance and find the meaning of the, of the word. Like um, here, you we can look up the word like faithful, faithful um, according to um, Colossians was used. It's um, it can be used to say faithful or faithfully, believe, believer, believers, trustworthy, or sure. But where where how is it used in our particular uh, scripture is the, is the question. So, like, we'll use faithful, we'll um, highlight it, and then we'll go to uh, the Bible word study. Oh, no, we'll go here. This is the word faithful. So, um, so and, a, a question ahead. right there, you said go to the concordance. Is that also something you would do with the thesaurus? 
No, a concordance, um, a thesaurus would give you a likely, um, another word that means the same thing. Um, but a concordance would give you the original meaning of the word either in Hebrew or, or in Greek. Though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a little different. It goes to the actual language and it lets you know what the actual word means. Like um, the Greek word is here, but it's pronounced in English or Greek, pistos. And it means faithful, reliable, or believable. But um, how often is it used would be the question. And then you, this software allows you to go to the word and break it down. So it's used 67 times. Six, the word that the word pistos is used 67 times in the Bible. And um, in, in that sense, um, the word faithful or faithfully, it's actually used 295 times in, 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 the, in the Bible, but in, with the word belief, it's used 253 times. And with the word trustworthy, it's used seven times. And the word sure, it's used 28 times. So they're using the same word. We'll see it as faithful in the Bible, but it, it's, it actually has different, um, it's used differently in different parts of the, of the scripture. And this, this, this software will just allow you to delve in to find mm -hmm. out which ones. Now, if you want to know where each one is used, you can use the cross references and you can use the, it actually breaks it down. So it, it's a lot more in depth. And for the most part, um, ministers, pastors, um, Bible study teachers will use something this in depth. Um, the lay person will just use a regular um, you know, you, your regular Bible and if you it, this makes it easy to do the cross references. I don't know how cross references was done before computer software was available. You would have to just do it um, inch by inch really slowly but um, it would take a long time as you can see if you, you're looking at 256 times a word is used how would you actually know it would take a long time for, you, for a person to actually go through it. But I mean, they, that's what they used to do in the past. You know, computer software wasn't available until, um, until the nineties, actually, even, even um, uh, less than that. So um, we had to, we had to use like the Bible dictionaries and the, the lexicons and things like that. So um, um when you're doing your Bible interpretation, um, your inductive study, you, I, I would, I would really recommend you having um, some type of Bible software. And there's free versions, like I said last week, but it just helps you break the word down. So when you, um, let's look at another word and see, um, I, I, the will of God. I, I was interested in that phrase, the will of God. So. Um, you can look it up and you, let's find out where I see the, the word will. What does that mean? So let's look at that um, as far as that study goes. So the will of God is loading. So you, on my screen, it shows the different types. It can be um, the desire or desires God should will it or, or or god should will it so and how how can it be used um trent where's that phrase coming from the will of god uh, oh um colossians 1 1 paul an apostle of jesus christ by the will of god so okay. this this particular um in, in study well bible's bible inductive study is all coming from Colossians 1, 1 through 3. So um, even though the, the word or the phrases may be used in different areas of the scripture, um, we're just focusing in on how that particular word is used and where else has it been used or um, where else the phrase has been uh, um, uh, pulled out of. So 
the word will you it was used 60 62 times um that particular word was used in matthew 6 10 matthew 7 21 matthew 12 50 um matthew 18 14 luke 12 47 so it gives you all the different locations where that word will like john 6 40 for this is the will of my father and as you go through it you'll you can you can get the um uh, a better understanding of how it was used. Like um, they were showing us an example earlier. Well, some of the, the when I was looking at the how to use the software of how um, one particular verse was talking about. Um, um, you should meditate on on the on the word day and night. The word meditate. We had a different meaning. But the, he showed that that actual meaning of the word meditate means to actually to speak, utter, to um, moan. So when he was going through all the different verses of the scripture, it's not so much that you're just thinking about it. It's that you're, you're, you're speaking forth throughout the day, meditate day, night, speak the word forth. And that's, that's the meaning of that word meditation. And we, as, um, you know, 21st century people, we think of the word meditate is that you're just thinking upon it. But the actual word means, it, it, the way it was described in, in scripture was to, to, to speak forth, to speak it out. And that, that's how, that's what the, the power of an inductive study will allow you to um, discover. So when you do a... Um, um, a study like um, the, the word will, it means to the, the desire, desires, or God should allow it. How often would, was that word particularly used? God should will it. So it was only used in 1 Peter 3.17. Um, for it is better if God should will it so that you suffer for doing what is right rather than for doing what is wrong. So it it gives you a better perspective of um, um, the, the word and how it's actually actually used. So um, any questions right now as far as uh, um, the, uh, the interpretation of a, how, to, how to do an interpretation of a study? Um, no, but I do... Um... The, you said that, that when you were going through the software, um, the guy was showing you how um, the word or the, the true meaning of the word meditation. Yeah. I found that really interesting. But so what, what scripture is that? Because I, I want to go back later and do my own because I know I've always thought of it as just, you know, like you might read the scripture. Um, yeah. You know, you might be reading your Bible and you might read it and then... I always thought it meant as you are going throughout your day or whatever, you're contemplating what the scripture has said, you know, you're thinking about it. That was, that's my first time hearing that, that they were actually speaking. Let me see if I can pull up that actual um, study. Cause I had it up here. Okay. Well, I, that, you know what, you don't have to take time to do that, but just, I'll just look up. Uh, meditation or 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 meditate it was, one of those words. It was, I guess it was, it was a particular scripture that he used. Oh, okay. Um, and I, I thought to me, I think it's worth finding it because it was so interesting. Okay. Um, let me see if we can uh, pull it up here. Uh, it's in the it's in their tutorial because um, it, it it it's so much it's so much to so much to glean from this stuff. Right. You know you you can't well at least I don't I don't have the command of the of the scriptures like that yet. Let me uh let me find it over here. Give me give me a give me a second, you guys. I'll bring it up. Okay. Okay, 
It was, let me see here. Was it a scripture in Psalm where it says meditate day and night? It was, you know what? For some reason, I want to say it was in Luke. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, you can, um, you don't have to spend too much time. You can find it um, for me later and then I'll go. But um, All right. were, you using a, were they using a concordance to do that word study? He was, or well, he was, using, he was using, um, the word the word study too that that I was I was just showing you guys. Okay. Um. Alrighty. Let me get back to. You. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure exactly. I wish I could find it because I it was I had to listen to it twice because I, I I never knew that either, and right. the way he explained it, he broke it down so clearly, and I'm like, oh man, that's really good. So. I'm, I'm on a mission, actually, because I really wish I could help. Uh, yeah, whenever find. you find it, you you know, I'll get it from you. I don't want to take away from the rest of the study. Okay. Now, Trent, um, when yeah. I would say one of the, um, like when you're looking at a word after you've done your observation and there's obviously these, well, there's going to be words that jump off the page. Those words right. that you know are much more important. Those words that are, you know, important to the to the understanding of the text. And you, you, you looked at a couple of them already. You, uh, what was faithful, and um, I forget the other one that we just looked at as well. Um, was that pistos? And oh, you, yeah. right? And you, and you know, and and the tool again that gives you the frequency. Uh, to which that word is used. It's right. used however many times in the, you know, the, the transliterated or the translation in Hebrew or Greek and how many times in the New and Old Testament. Um, what, what are we learning from that? Like, again, so, because again, all of that information, some of that information you may take and use, especially if you're teaching it and relay that to your audience. But some of it, and probably most of, the information is just for your understanding of it, for you to get a complete understanding of the term. Because, um, of course, everything that you see or learn about any particular word or phrase, you're not going to repeat to your audience, but it'll help you in your understanding of it. If I learned that this word is used however many times in the in the New Testament, 200 times or 30 times. Um, but then sometimes you'll hear, I think Trent may have just said, uh, you know, especially the thing that kind of catches you sometimes is when you find that word and it says, this is the only time it is used in the New Testament. Then, you know, usually you're going to hone in on that a little bit more. Doesn't mean that the words that are used more common aren't, aren't as important, but there may be a reason why, or a, a particular reason the author chose this word at that time to convey this message. And then it's going to kind of draw you in a little bit more. Or on the flip side, it may be that that word is so common that they wanted to use that common phrase so that he could, uh, uh, so that he could draw uh, any and all in you know to the understanding of of exactly what he's trying to say i'm using this common phrase that you all will understand so some of the information is going to be wide and varied and it's going to give you a better knowledge a, a better uh, a better take on that word whether it's broadly used or whether it's very specifically used whether it's common or whether it's uh, very intentional and specific yeah, and uh, from the three um, phases of an inductive study, when you do an inductive study, I would say interpretation is the most, um, um, I guess, what the word would intricate or the most, if you want to say difficult, because you're actually delving into certain words. Uh, you're, 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 you're pointing out certain words and you're researching the meaning of those words, you know, why a certain word is used 
the original language, um, the tense. Uh, you, you know, Pastor Sean sometimes say this is in the perfect past, perfect present something, and it emphasizes um, um, something in particular. And so it helps you draw in, say, um, when, when you're reading, sometimes we don't pick up the, the emotion or the, the, um, the passion that the, the writer is trying to convey by this type of study and knowing those words and how it's used in the tense and, and the, the, what, the, what he's using it for or how he's placing it, it gives you a better understanding, give it a little bit more emphasis on um, um, why he used that particular word. So um, this is Frank, after- Can you maybe the ask the question, like, so, we, so that we know that they're getting an understanding. Um, why is it again? Because literally the first point, um, well, probably uh, almost in most cases, again, so ah, let me back up. When you're doing interpretation, it's not just going to start and finish with, of course, getting a Greek word or, or the original language. It's going to, you're going to be able to take that and build upon it in so many other areas. Like we say, the culture, the language, the geography, the historicity, historical events, demographics. There's so many other areas that you're going to have to get into so that you can understand the text. But to start, why do we need to know what it means in the original language? And it may be an obvious question, but just so we can know that you understand how why that's so important. Before you um, do that, I think the ref the, the scripture reference is Psalms one two for meditation. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the, okay. Um, for some reason, I can't. I don't recall exactly what he pulled up. Uh, I just for some reason I keep seeing Luke. And I don't, I don't know, but I wish I could find it. If, if I find it, I will we'll share it with you guys. But um, yeah, the meditation. Um, and it, he went back to the Old Testament. And I'm thinking it was one of the first. He was in the first in the in the Pentateuch somewhere, but I can't I can't recall. I don't recall right now. So, but I'll, um, I'll try to find it before we get off the study here. But um, going back to the interpretation part of it. Um, so, so can I stop right there? Yeah. Can I, okay, Greg just indicated that it could be in Psalms, or it is in Psalms about meditate day and night, like mm -hmm. a tree planted by the rivers of water, that stuff. Could we yeah. not go to that scripture when we're talking about meditation and find where else it is, like you just said earlier? That's okay. Let's do that. We'll just go to. There is a Luke 21 and 14. I don't know if that's the one you're talking about. It, um, okay. Let, but let it me, says. Let me... 21 and 14. It says actually not to meditate, but I was just. Oh. cross-referencing Luke in the term. Okay. So it was um, kind of hitting and missing a little bit. Yeah, I guess Greg so. said it was Psalms... What, what Psalms did you say, one. Psalms I will one. meditate on, you know, Psalms 1, he said, I think. I'd be like a tree planted by the... You know, where he, the Psalms 1 version. Yeah. Psalms 1, 2. Psalm chapter one, verse two. Let's see what that says. I was on my um, I was on my laptop <laughs> this this afternoon doing this, so that's why that particular um, information is not readily available. This is my. But two is exactly the one I was thinking of too, the one in Psalms one. Let me see if I can. Right. He meditate day and night. I don't see it. Blessed is coming with 
He's been. I don't see the word meditation because I have a different version. Let me see King James. Oh, here it is right here. And that's in Hebrew. So let's uh, find out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Greg, you're absolutely the same word. Here it is. We're going to show, I'm going to show you guys right now. It won't be as good as the um, as the um, the teacher who was showing us. Okay, but here's the word. Here's the word in um, 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 he Hebrew, and I don't know how you pronounce it in English, but it means it, to cool, growl, mutter, speak, mourn, utter. It, it is imagined. It is study, but uh, the general term is mutter, muttered, mourn, soar, speak, talk, meditate. So um, it has the implication of you actually speaking forth, not not so much just thinking. It's used more often in the in the in the in the in the way of speaking forth. So that's what this thing was pulling out when you when you do meditate. My, my Bible shows in the middle, I have the John MacArthur, the New King James Version, and it says ponder by talking aloud. I think that's what it says, talking to himself. So ponder oh, by talking, like you said, speak it out. Yes, yeah, speak it out. Um, the word speak, let me see if I can, I can't find the New Testament one when he mentioned it, uh, where it's mentioned where it was speaking. But um, exactly, that, so that's when... That that was very in, intriguing to me, just to know that um, it, it. We always imagine that you're just thinking in your head because you're meditating it. Because that's how we meditate. You don't say nothing. But it's, it's like Sister Nelson mentioned her her Bible said you're speaking it forth, and that's why it's good to have a good study Bible, like a MacArthur study Bible. He does a lot of this stuff already. It's already inputted for you for those who don't have the the, the computer stuff. Um, and, um, but it's, but it's good to know, it's good to know those things. So when we're going about our day, um, that's why it's good to memorize scripture and recite it and, and to sing songs. You remember scripture says to, um, bless each other with Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making a melody, um, in your heart to the Lord. So you're singing forth, you're singing forth those scriptures, you're, you're bringing it out, but you know, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So those you mentioned kind of, something those... About, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you mentioned, you mentioned something about memorizing scripture. And our, Sheree, the, way, the way we learned it, what Poppy used to teach us, uh, we learned the meditation portion. It's kind of oh. like in grade school, you learn how to spell. You read the word, you say the word, you read the word out loud. That's kind of the way we were taught. That's, that's a way you could meditate in the same manner. Read the scripture silently as many times as you like. Read right. it as meditate you do say it in within your heart and in your mind then you okay. read it out loud it's that same kind of system that same kind of principle and then you will memorize it at the same time because that's the way we learn to meditate also in meditation we also learn to listen mm. that was mm -hmm. part of it that's true okay. yeah and you use yeah. your, your your senses yeah so, but yeah, I, I found that quite interesting about the, that when he gave that example. So that's that's the strength of um, doing the, um, the the word study and getting the the language in its original form. It'll give you a better understanding of um, how to apply it when we get to the application part. And um, like I said, you don't have to go as in depth as um, um, some of the. Uh, as the software is, this is really good, and I'm still learning how to use it. And um, um, I just like, you know, I like to know the inner workings of all this stuff. So I think that's the engineering part in me. It it, it just works out good for me. I I, I enjoy learning the in depth stuff. But um, um, any any other comments or questions? or um, points anybody want to make? We didn't finish interpretation, though, did we? 
No, no, no. We um oh. no, not by not by long shot. Oh, okay. Let me go. okay. Um like um when we were going over the uh, the parts for observation, these are the parts for observation and we didn't we didn't touch on all of those either. Okay. So interpretation, I'm just uh, letting you guys know when we when you do an interpretation, you want to examine the words, the the context of the book. The, the the literature type of the passage and that takes um, an inductive study shouldn't be rushed it's something that you go slow something that you delve into you're 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 digging and you're researching you're digging and you're researching and you're going to always uncover something more so um, this is this is for you to do your own study it's not it's not designed to like um, like your your daily reading of your reading your scripture. Mm -hmm. um, that that's that's your your what do you call it in the morning? Your meditation time. Devotion. Yeah, that's yeah, your devotion. That's that's different. You know, times where we'll read Bible stories to our children and we'll read like the story of David and Goliath. That's a diff, that's a different form of reading. Then we'll have our own devotion time where we're getting fed from the Lord. We're you know we're speaking to Him. He's speaking through us, and we're reading through. Then we'll have that time where you're just reading through the Scripture in the, the time of the year. This is where you're breaking down something, and you want to know a passage or a, a section of Scripture, and you're just doing more uh, in depth research. So you're you're going real slow. So you, it's nothing rush, and it's going to. You may just be looking at words for for one session, and the next day you might be just looking at the type of literature. You're you're just diving in and getting more and more um, familiar with the scripture. So it's um, it's um, something to just um, be aware of, and you know the historical. Sometimes I I I'm really a, a good, big on the history part so i i like to delve more into the, the historical i'm not as strong as the um, the lit literature of the passage i'm i'm not strong with that so the software should help me to be able to um, gain more knowledge of, of understanding and the cross references i wasn't even aware that um i would never do a cross reference the the old-fashioned way because it would take forever, but at least I know now I can click a button and it's going to tell me all everything where it's used before. That's going to be very helpful for me. So. Really interesting. Um, just to add, just what you were saying. I mean, the, one of the points that that we don't that I think we want to make sure you know and understand is like Trent just said. This part can't be rushed. Well, none of it can be rushed. We know, right? <laughs> we don't run a rush any of it. But this part is so important um, after you maybe have, through the observation, identified your topic or your subject or the text, pretext of, of any particular uh, scripture. If you would, let's see, 1 Timothy 4.15. Now, Paul's writing to Timothy. And again, just to carry the thought, how important it is to, to meditate on these scriptures, how important it is to, to seek, uh, to go deeply into them, to solicit through prayer, through the Holy Spirit, to get into every heart that you can. So 1 Timothy 4.15. Now we know Paul is writing to his understudy, Timothy, and of course, Timothy being a preacher. And so it's in that context. But of course, this is what he's telling the preacher. When you're getting your message together for the people, this is part of the process. So he says in 1 Timothy 4.15, and we'll read 15 and 16, take pains with these things, be absorbed in them, so that your progress will be evident to all. 16 says, pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in these things, for as you do this, you will ensure salvation for both yourself and for those who hear you. So he's just emphasizing how important it is to take so much time to, to, to take pains, he says, with these things. He said, that, take that, time. That, start with 15. Then what, what did you begin 15 again and say that again? He says, take pains 
with these things. And my mine says meditate. So yeah, you're right. Exactly. I got that. That's that term. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That, I'm, yeah. I was looking at the word meditate, and I'm gonna do that quick study. And find now out that's it. why again, it's again. So the one of the first points, again, like I said, you're not going to. Well, you're gonna probably touch on some of the different categories while you're interpreting uh, the text or these words, but and in, and and in, in every case, you're not gonna use all the information. But one thing you do need to do in each case for those important words is to identify them number one through observing observation and to get the original meaning. That's one thing that you have to do for each case and every case, even though I may not get into, you know, I, I may know the historical events that, that dictated why this writer spoke to these people at this time about this thing. And I may make mention of it, or I may touch on the language a little bit and how there's a difference in terms. But in each case, uh, depending on what the application may actually be, but in each case, what you do need to do is get the original language from those terms so that there's no confusion about how he's using it or what he was trying to say. Exactly. You may go different locations. Go ahead, Trent. Oh, well, I just wanted to point out to Sister Nelson that, you know, see, in English, our English is so limited. We think the word meditate means the same meditate that was in the book of Psalms. But in this sense, so it's a totally different word. And where, where Sean was reading from his version, they were pulling that out. It means to practice, cultivate, or conspire. Right. So it's, it's different. It's a, you know, so all we see, that's, see, that's what this, that's the, the one of the key reasons why you want to do an inductive study. That way people um, won't, I mean, that way you'll know um, that just because you see the word meditate, doesn't always mean the same thing in English because our, 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 that's the way our language is. But in, in the Greek, it has just more just more to it. And that's what makes it so a good study Bible and a, a, good, a good concordance and a good Bible dictionary. And you can do, you can do your own um, inductive study. And just all we, all, what I'm trying to uh, stress is learning the, the, the strategy, observation, interpretation, and then application. So you, you don't have to be as elaborate. You don't have to have as much stuff as I have on this software. It, it can be something very basic, like your study Bible and um, a good um, concordance or a good Bible dictionary. If that's all you have, that's all you have. And But you can still get um, a lot more out of it than just reading it, just reading the Bible and uh, assuming meditate means the same meditation in Psalms. And as we can see, it doesn't. So that 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 was a great example of uh, the reason why an inductive study is important. There's also another one too that would be fun to 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 um, examine, and it's the scripture where it says, um, "Hate mother and father." You remember that one? That confuses most people uh, when he says, oh, hate, "Hate mother and father." Yeah. Yeah, you know what? It, because that, that's against God's character to hate like right. we hate. So it's not it, that would be a fun one to really look up and bring everything forward. Yeah, it would be. Uh, uh, so piggybacking, piggybacking off of the word hate, and again, this might be another good one because I'm I'm curious as to what hate means in this scripture that I'm going to bring up versus the one that Nami just said. Um, Jacob, have I loved? Esau, have I hated? I hate it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh, yeah. so intriguing to me, and I, I was thinking about that literally just the other day. Like, I, I want to, I need to study that again because of the use of the word hate it hate uh-huh mm -hmm. so that would be good that was yeah. they're both similar and in, in the interpretation or analogy mm -hmm. with, with one little small detail that makes it different yes and i can't tell you what that is because like you said you want to study it yeah yeah because yeah. i recall um uh, an interview that Oprah Winfrey did and her reasoning for I was gonna say hating that. Christianity. <laughs> and she said, well, God hates and that 
You know, uh -huh. how can you No, that's not what that means. And right, what Brother right. Trent is saying, the reason why you do this inductive study is that when you, you get used to, first of all, even if you don't use the inductive study, you're knowing and understanding that nine out of 10 times that word it does not mean what it means in original language, in, in, in English, should I say. And right. often we assume, and that's where we err when we take it. That's another way of taking it out of context because we would say, well, this is what this is, and this, this is the proof text of your argument. But no, that's not what that means. Although it says that in our language, then keep in mind our language is what? A translation of the Greek and the Hebrew and Aramaic. So we will have to do what he's suggesting and recommending. If you're not sure, and if you're being challenged to understand what that means, you do the word study. You do the work. Yeah, and um, um, you don't have to be all um, super efficient. You, you, you're going to get better as you practice. Trust me, I'm not, I'm not the best at an in inductive study. I've always wanted to get really good at it. Because um, um, I think it frees you from being dependent upon um, my pastor taught this way. So that's what I believe. But, you know, I, it's hard to untrain your mind after you indoctrinated by hearing stuff over and over and over. So it's really good to uh, just have your own understanding, have your own conclusion. Like, like Greg says, not your own, but after God has, after you've done the study, God is going to um, reveal to you that truth because it's not what man says, it's what God has, um, what you have discovered God has taught. And that next week we'll go over the application and that's the part that we'll, we'll, um, 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 we'll apply, we'll pull the, the, this information that we've been drawing We'll say, well, how does it apply to our lives? How 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 can it? Uh, what can we learn from? What can we glean from it? So, um, yeah, that's 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 that'll be the third part. So um, I know it's a little cluttered. My my brain is a little cluttered when it comes to this part anyway, because it's so much, so much to uh, digest, and I haven't grasped the uh, how to use the software. As effectively as I want, but I as, thought it was as, quite interesting. Well, I'm I'm glad. Thank you. As as we go, we'll get better at it because I what I want for our our church, our little church body is everybody is to be to be so efficient at doing their own inductive study that we'll we will be will be some like um, some special forces, Navy SEALs in our neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we want we're gonna be sharp, but we we know we're gonna we're gonna need we're gonna need the tools. So this is the tool we're gonna be helping each other get better and better. Very good too for um, like you're saying for 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 our neighborhood. It's one of the reasons we're uh, we're, we're 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 hanging in and trying to um, literally to, to to one of the things the words that was used quite often was tools, so that when you hear these things. Because a lot of times in, in our neighborhoods and in so many churches, you know, there's a certain style of preaching and you throw a word out there. We think we know what it means. They run off with it. And then we do not have a firm, full and complete understanding of it. But if you know how to grab that word, get the meaning of it, apply it, uh, make sure it's in proper context and go from there then you will have the tools, number one, to feed your family. And of course, then you'll become equipped so that God can use you uh, above and beyond that. So uh, what Trent doesn't know already that, no, we're, we're, we're probably going to be, we're, we're going to talk right after. And um, you're, you're probably going to have to stay here in interpretation for a while, um, at least one or two more sessions, uh, maybe give a few more examples of again, getting into the language, geography, culture, demographics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we'll talk because again, like we said, right? We can't rush it. Right, so. that's true. <laughs> that's true. And yeah, I don't mind staying because it's um, it's um, it's interesting. This is very far, intriguing. Far too much for one hour. So uh, y'all yeah. get ready to eat next week. <laughs> uh -huh. 
All right, so let's close in the word of prayer. And thank you guys for uh, being hanging with me. Father God, we thank you for our, our time of study. We thank you, Father God, for teaching us and showing us a little bit more um, of your word. We ask that your, your, your spirit would, would give us a hunger and the desire to know uh, you in a personal way. And we ask, Lord, that you would give us the, the ability to, to um, grasp your word and to apply it for our lives. We give you praise and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Thanks, so Trent. Me, oh, you're more than welcome. Thank you for um, not um, um, clicking off. Like, this is boring. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no way. God bless you guys. Love you all. Everybody, love you all. Good love you all. You and have you back, Sister Curly. She gone.